Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through adjacency matrix of a graph guys. So how it is represented. So basically this comes under the representation of a graph in terms of matrix. Okay. So basically whenever you draw a particular graph and if you want to convert it into its matrix representation, how we can convert it. So that is what we will be discussing in this lecture guys. Okay. Okay. So basically whenever you are writing some kind of programs, right? So in programs, you cannot draw the graph and give it as an input, right? So you need to give a matrix representation or any kind of representation for this graph, right? Yes. So if you take a small example, so let the graph G of V comma be a simple graph with N vertices. So there are N vertices ordered from V1 to Vn. So they are from V1 to Vn and they, when you are drawing a representation of a graph, sorry, when you are representing it in a matrix format, A is equals to A of I comma J. Okay, so i comma j indicates the position of i and j. Similarly, the size is nothing but n into m. In simple words, you can say it as n into n only because it is nothing but the combination of vertices, guys. Number of vertices. If the number of vertices are 5, you will be having a 5 cross 5. If the number of vertices are 10, 10 cross 10 in that way. Okay, of g is an n cross m matrix. So, if you take a small example, m of i comma j, if it is 1, when there is a path between those two vertices. If it is zero, there is no path. Okay, guys, don't worry. We'll be, once you are going through the example, you'll be having a clear idea how you can represent any given graph into a matrix. Okay. So here is a small example for it. A of G is equals to V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. So here we are having five vertices, right? So let us write it in terms of a matrix. V4, V5. Okay, so if you notice here at V1, so in this graph, are there any self loops guys? No. So hence, there is a, there will be no edge from 1 to 1 or 2 to 2 or 3 to 3 or 4 to 4 or 5 to 5, right? Yes, simple. Similarly, here we are having a path from V1 to V2 and V2 to, sorry, V1 to V5. So V1 to V2 and V5 we are having. So V2 and V5 and the rest will be 0. So if there is a path, you'll be representing it with 1. If there is no path, you'll be representing it with 0. Simple logic. Got it? Yes. Similarly, from V2, we are having to V1, V3 and V4, V1, V3 and V4, 0 at V5. So if there is no direct path for V5. Similarly, for V3, from V3, we are having, sorry, from V3, we are having from V2 and V4. So V2 and V4, so rest both zeros. Similarly, from V4, V2, V3 and V5, V2, V3 and V5 at V4, at V1, 0. Similarly, from V5. We are having a path to V1 and V5. So V1 and V5. So rest two zeros. Okay. So in this way represented. So if you observe these two matrices are exactly the same. So in this way you will be representing a particular graph in terms of a matrix guys. So basically the application of this if you ask whenever you are trying to solve some kind of problems using some kind of algorithms. When you write a program in C or any other programming language. You cannot give the input as a graph right. So you cannot draw this on paper and pass it as an input using scanner or anything right. Yes. So the only way that you will be taking the input is nothing but the matrix representation in which you will be specifying if there is an edge you will be representing it with 1. If there is no edge you will be representing it with 0. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about how you can represent a graph in terms of a matrix. So in the next lecture we will be going in detail about a degree of a vertex guys. So every graph and each and every each and every vertex will be having a particular degree. So if you ask me what is a degree is nothing but number of incoming edges or outgoing edges guys. Okay. So if you ask me for this, the degree is nothing but two. Okay. So if you ask me for this, what is the incoming degree here? We are having a directed graph. So here one edge is incoming. So incoming degree will be one and outgoing degree is one also because outgoing edge is also one. So in this way, we'll be discussing about the degree of the vertex in detail with some examples guys. Okay. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.